Hi and good afternoon and welcome to today's video. Now today we're going to be carrying out uh, some very simple repairs or maintenance that you can do to a video recorder. So there has been um, a bit of a uh, resurgence in old VHS machines and to a lesser extent old Betamax machines. And um, the typical sort of deck that uh, a lot of people sort of end up with is one of these types of units from sort of the early to mid noughties, so the early to mid 2000s. And what tends to happen is a lot of the sellers selling these units actually receive quite a few um, complaints about these units. And inevitably they have to give people their money back. Now, the thing is, it's very rarely a problem with the actual video recorder itself. The one thing that you need to bear in mind is these things, cassettes, have, if they're not stored properly, a very finite life. A good example is this one. If I zoom in on the cassette itself, you might be able to see through the cassette window that there is mould on the tape. Now, there are ways that you can actually get the tape cleaned. Um, so you can run it through, say, another machine and physically clean the tape off. But what a lot of people do is they may sort of have some old tapes that they might want to play. They'll chuck them into the machine. And one of the first things that will happen is the heads will clog. Now, that means that you get a lot of these going back to the people that have sold them. Now, obviously, that's disappointing for a number of reasons. First off, it's disappointing for the person that's bought the video recorder, looking forward to playing back their old cassettes. Second off, it's disappointing because the seller has got a machine back which they thought that they had managed to sell. So, if the machine has been working absolutely fine previously, and it suddenly stops working after you put this one cassette in it, First thing that you want to do is dispose of that cassette. Um, if it has mould on it, you might be able to clean it. And we will look into ways that you can clean mould off of uh, old video, video cassettes in a later video. But for the moment, if it's a cassette that you can get rid of, get rid of it. If it doesn't have mould on it, what has probably happened is the actual cassette has started to break down itself. So the oxide, which is um, effectively glued to the cellophane tape, tends to actually start to come away after a while. Some cassettes are worse than others. Um, for example, this one here, which is a... It's in a Memorex case, but it's a BASF cassette. That one's actually lasted very well. But there are other cassettes, such as um, Scotch cassettes from the 1980s, which tended to shed their oxide um, as early as the late 90s, from what I remember. So, to fix the issue of clogged heads, you're going to need a crosshead screwdriver, and you're going to need to know where your video recorder's screws are. On units like this, they are typically on the side. What tends to happen usually is the lid will just lift off. And then expose the actual insides of the unit itself. In this case there is an additional screw on the back so that's why you always want to make sure that you know where your screws are. So we'll just undo that screw. Make a note of the colours of the screws. So this black one goes on the back in this case and then we've got these little silver ones that go on the side. And off with the lid and that exposes the deck itself. Now let's do a quick tour of the inside of the video recorder. 
So this is the inside of a typical VHS deck. Um, Betamax cassettes, sorry, Betamax decks are different, but the technology is very similar. So within this VHS deck, we have the video head drum, which is this large rotating drum here. And you can see these individual little items there. They're actually the head chips. So this one has actually got a total of six heads two for hi-fi audio reproduction and two for video reproduction both standard play and long play you also have this head here which is the arrays head you have another head over here audio control head so just sorry audio control head and audio arrays head now that actually provides you with a linear audio track Whereas this one provides you with a hi-fi audio track that is um, on VHS machines, on PAL VHS machines, it inserts the hi-fi signal into what's called the guard band. So basically there is a guard band between two tracks on the tape. So the tracks are horizontally laid out, sorry, horizontally laid out, and there is a guard track in between uh, each one of those tracks to basically stop crosstalk. Because the um, hi-fi heads are recording at a different frequency, then they actually cancel out any sort of um, crosstalk and also they don't show up on the picture because it's a completely different frequency. Now, when you have a problem with a video head getting clogged, you're going to want to get yourself piece of paper. So I'll just zoom out, you can actually see what's going on. So get yourself a piece of paper, tear off a small strip of that paper. You want to get yourself some video head cleaner, this is Service Old Video 40, although 99% isopropyl alcohol is also very acceptable for this particular job. You want to spray some of your video head cleaner onto the paper. You then want to place the paper over the video head, like so, or the upper head drum, and then apply light pressure to the head drum. Rotate the head drum like so. Now you'll feel under your finger a couple of things rubbing against it. Those are the video head chips. So you don't want to go too hard because you don't want to snap any of those chips. They are very fragile and you just need to be aware of that. Now what you'll notice is if it has picked up anything you'll get uh, leftover oxide actually on here, actually on the paper. This one doesn't actually have too much on there so this one is just sort of normal sorts of residue that you would expect. If it's clogged, you will get a lot on there and you'll want to repeat this process two or three times until you have nothing showing on this bit of paper. So you can change the position of the paper and then just go over again. And you want to get it to a point where it's either very faint or you have none left whatsoever. In extreme cases, you can spray the head directly and then take a piece of dry paper and just run that around like so. That is an extreme method and before you start to put anything back together again, you need to leave the lid off the machine to allow the uh, isopropyl or video head cleaner to evaporate. You can see there that that has actually shifted quite a bit of it. Now, the other items that you want to clean are the arrays head and the audio control and audio arrays heads. They come in contact with the tape as well, so you just want to give those 
clean like so and like so again using paper to do so because the pinch roller and capstan which is here and there respectively both come into contact with the video tape itself give those a clean and with the capstan press the paper against it and just gently rotate sorry the pinch roller press the paper against it and gently rotate like so and what you should find is you'll probably also see a mixture of oxide and pinch roller come off there these tape posts also a good idea to give those a bit of a clean as well so just give those a gentle rub like so that just gets rid of any contamination that may have occurred when you were playing the cassette that uh, was either mouldy or shed all of its oxide. Now, because this is a newer deck, this would have actually had um, an automatic head cleaner, which was uh, literally it was positioned there, and it was literally a little arm that came into contact with the video head drum when the video head, uh, when the machine rather, was loading or unlacing or lacing the cassette. Now, when they were new, they worked quite well, and a lot of the decks were billed as having automatic head cleaning. As the years have gone by, the foam on uh, those little head cleaning things have actually broken down, and they do more harm than good these days, so they do actually clog the video heads. If you get a deck like this, and it's still fitted, just remove that little foam pad and uh, you won't have any problems moving forwards as regards uh, clogging of heads from the foam pad itself. Now this one you just want to leave in um, an open space and just let all of the oxide evaporate from the machine itself. Once that's all sorted and once it has evaporated, so give it about half an hour or so, you can put the cover back on and then you can test out uh, your cassette. So obviously don't use the cassette that caused the problem in the first place. Use a different cassette that you know works. And then just test the machine and make sure it works. And that is actually the end of today's video. So hopefully this will just give you a quick insight into what you can do with the machine that you've just purchased. And seems to have suddenly... Um, started to destroy tapes or rather not destroy tapes but uh, has suddenly started to provide a really poor quality playback picture and hopefully that'll save you a job of having to send the machine back but for now i'd like to thank you all very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you again soon